Good afternoon, everybody. Well, I should say good morning because you're usually here in the morning with me. But today we are doing this in the afternoon. Is Ismail de Sosa? Is that pronounced right? We got it beautifully. Oh, thank goodness. Anyway, I don't know how you pronounce his name, but his bread is the best thing in the United States world. Reunion Bakery. He's up baking and he hasn't got time for us usually at that hour. So there we are. Good afternoon. How are you? I am good, Gabby. How are you? I am fine. I'm just watching my computer as we chat for a minute because they have updated something and that's enough to make you crazy. But it does say it's recording. Okay. Ismail, you by far make the best bread so let's start by tell me about you. How did you start? I know you're not from here originally, I don't think. Tell me all about you. Well, we all, uh, the family has a, we're all Portuguese, but we we're all have that uh, Portuguese influence. We're raised all, uh, so born in Portugal, raised in Venezuela. And so we've had that influence from the European continent and the South American continent. Uh, I moved as a baby, so I, uh, I've been moving around a lot. And then about 10 years ago, I moved to the U.S. Uh, and as soon as I moved, I started working in the food industry. I have been working in the food industry uh, prior to this, but more never, never baking. I had working, I have been working in restaurants in Europe. And as soon as I moved to the US, I I missed the thing that I do right now. And it was the fact that people will go to a bakery every day for a loaf of bread. Right. And that that kind of was my motivation to to start to start learning about this. Oh wow. Okay. So you were not from a family of bakers? Not at all. Not at all. My my dad is a uh, a banker. <laughs> <laughs> Not a banker. Uh, correct. And my mom is a teacher. Oh, wow. But one thing we would always do, and it seems to be a tradition everywhere besides the U.S., but the U.S., do, they, they do appreciate this. And it's going to a bakery for a warm loaf of bread. Absolutely. So exactly. despite the fact, yeah, I don't think there's a, a thing that people are used to doing here. Like if you go to Paris, you know, you're going to see someone right. always with, with a baguette under their arm. Right. Not here. But um, I just missed it. We, I used to, I grew up doing that. Well, I think you sort of changed things in Denver. I mean, if I... I'm and to anybody who is watching this, I'm telling the truth. I mean, I live and die by your bread and eat it every day. And if I don't buy it every day, I get it every few days, or somebody gets it for me and brings it to me. Because there once you've had homemade divine bread, not homemade by you. So you had to develop learning. How to do this? Yeah, I I worked for a few guys that I consider now mentors. Um, I worked for a lot of bakeries, but many of them I I don't bother even mentioning because they're, they didn't they didn't really make a change uh, in the way I I pursue this this career. Um, but there is one big one uh, that I I really have as an example. It's called Zach the Baker in Florida. He's a James Beard nominee probably like 20 times. So were you. <laughs> and yeah, the guy, the guy is really amazing. Guy about my age. And at the time when the bakery started, which is where I, I at the time I went in, they were really passionate. They really want to push boundaries of what, um, from what it was being made at the time in Florida. And one thing they did was really interesting. Uh, Zach had lived in, in, in Paris for a while and he had met this 
this guy that ended up apprenticing, apprentice, apprentice, sorry, my English is not the best. Apprenticing. Apprenticing with him. And this guy ended, ended up luring half of the staff that we had at the time. And, and my mentor, uh, a guy called Maxime, uh, Maxime Loretto, a French guy also from uh, Bretagne. He, uh, I apprenticed with him and, and we worked together for a little bit. But at the time, what was happening in the bakery was beautiful. Just amazing stuff was being made at the time. And, and things have changed, you know, the, the bakery has evolved into, you know, more, more American staff. But uh, he changed the way I saw. I saw the industry. I fell in love in almost a romantic way because there was such a beautiful story to it. And that kind of got me into thinking when I moved to Denver because I actually never liked Florida. It was a little too hot for me. Oh, it's scary and uh, humid. <laughs> yes. Uh, when I moved to Denver, I, um, I, I, I was just seeking for a place to, to have a little, a little outlet on where to, I knew there was a market for what I was trying to do. And that happened to be the source where I'm at right now. There was a little bakery that was going out of business. Right. Uh, and that's where we set up shop. Okay. And how did you, de oh, your bread is fabulous. It's sourdough. I mean, did you bring that from Florida or Europe or did you develop it here? So baking bread in any environment, either the Florida, uh, with the heat and the humidity or here where it's a little cooler, almost no humidity, uh, changes everything. Sure. So, uh, sourdough, uh, or what the way I like to call it all naturally fermented bread, okay. uh, will change depending on where you make it. Okay. So I definitely learned to make it in Florida, but the truth is that I don't think I learned to make bread until I actually moved to Denver and learned how to make it here. The altitude, the humidity, the, the, the weather, and repetition, a lot of repetition. We're talking about the fact, this is going to sound crazy to anyone who sees this video, but it, we've been here for about six years, and every single loaf, all of the loaves, Okay. that these bakeries put out of, we're talking about thousands. I know. Hundreds of thousands I've made personally. Whoa. Okay, that does sound crazy. Yes. I, this is the one thing that I, I teach the guys how to do lamination, uh, croissant, viennoiserie, how we call it, yes. uh, and all the things. Uh, and that, that, there's a, a lot of technicality to that. But sourdough, there's a lot of feel. You need to understand where it's at and what it is doing that day because it is such a temperamental thing. Yes, it is. I I have tried to make bread fail. I, mean, <laughs> I it was not. Yeah, you know, it's fabulous. And it didn't taste anything. Every piece of bread from you, and you make all kinds of breads. But they're all with the sourdough starter. Yeah. So, unfortunately, I don't know for who's watching this. Uh, we used to have a huge variety of sourdoughs. Last year uh, was a very interesting year. We had a fire right. at the bakery, and we lost our our main oven, our deck oven, which is the bread oven. Uh, and we, we lost the capacity to bake so much. So now we're, we're trying to keep it simple. We make about two or three types of loaves a day. And sometimes we surprise people with a different flavor. But likely, if you come any day, you're going to have a classic sourdough with nothing but uh, flour and, and water and salt. It's incredible. Right. And, and I use, by the way, and funny enough, I'm wearing the hat of, the, oh, of okay. one of the millers that... Uh, mills flour for us uh, uh so we have a classic sour and we have a seeded a seeded loaf which i love but if you come to a bakery on a given day you might find baguettes baguettes sometimes people come to a bakery and ask me for 
oh, I want a sourdough. And I always say, or we have the guys saying the customer, oh, we have baguettes. Uh, and and the customer re usually replies, no, 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 I want the sourdough. But they don't understand that a baguette exactly. can be a sourdough. Right. So anything you get from our bakery is going to be all naturally fermented or right. how we call it in the U.S., all sourdough. Right. Uh, so a baguette, a sourdough, classic country loaf, a multigrain loaf, a, a fruit loaf. Uh, we make in, the, in Christmas, we make uh, Italian panettone and other loaves of bread that are all naturally fermented. And occasionally you make olive bread too. And I make olive bread. Now I'm making olive bread every weekend. Oh, you are? Yes. Well, okay, I guess I better know what I'm going to ask. <laughs> The only bread is, is a personal favorite of mine. It's so good. Yeah. I don't like all of it, but I love, you don't make a bread. I don't think is incredible. The crust Thank is you. fabulous. And, you know, right now, the only thing I will add for anybody, it's summer and you go to the farmer's market. We are living, my best friends are his very good friends and consumers too. But, we have BLTs, which is prosciutto in their house. But you go to the farmer's market and you get tomatoes or you buy fresh eggs. And whatever you get, I put on your bread. It starts in the morning. And that bread is my friend day and night. And I guess people say that if they're gluten-free, this bread works fine anyway. Yep. I always challenge anyone who comes to the bakery. Funny enough, a lot of people, not a lot. Some people come to a bakery asking for a gluten-free option. Yes. <laughs> and, and, and that's fine. I usually say, look, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to get you one of my loaves. I give, I give a loaf for free. And look, you're not going to die if you try it. But I'm going to, the likelihood of you being totally fine with the way we make our bread, it's nine out of ten. And the people I know who have tried it have gone back and they're hooked. And yep. you do make divine croissants and occasionally there's buns. And in line one day at the farmer's market, you passed out chocolate chip cookies that were fairly heavenly. Yes. And, and what's the little egg thing? Oh, the little pastel donata. It's a, it's a pastry from my home country, Portugal. Oh. It's so good. It's so good. That is uh, our, our, our number one pastry in terms of sales, number of pastries we sell. It is so, like, it is the type of pastry you walk into a place and you be like, oh, if you don't know about it, you're, it, you know, you might not even think about it because it's so small, right. unassuming. And then once you try it, you understand why we'll, we'll tell you you need to try this thing. Because every it's, time anyone walks into the bakery, we'll tell them, try it. <laughs> but it's basically eggs, right? It is It is a custard. Right. And pretty much any custard is made with eggs. So, But we say uh, in China, because it, it's, a, it's a Portuguese pastry, but almost every Portuguese colony has had uh, their version of it. In China, they call them egg tarts. Maybe they, they put a little more egg to it, uh, but it, it is, say, 90% milk and 10% and eggs. No, oh, it's so good. <laughs> I, have, I have another good friend who you know, no, Denise Mickelson with the Restaurant Association, and she can't stand eggs, and I live on eggs. And she, she brought me the first one. Because she said this is the only egg thing that you can't live without. <laughs> That's awesome. You can't. They are fabulous. So you're low. You're are you? Get, tell us when you're open. How people? So you're basically fresh bread every day, croissants. It might be cookies, whatever pastries you're doing that day. Cakes. Gabby, I'm going to tell you one thing. Okay. Uh, two things actually. You now that I'm thinking about two things. So when you walk into our bakery, uh, whatever time you come in, we open at 8 a.m. 
we close at three. Okay. If you come in at 10, you're going to get a loaf of bread that was made within the hour. Okay. If you walk at, if you walk in the bakery at 1 p.m., you're going to get a loaf of bread that was made within the hour. Same for a pastry, same for a pastel de nata. And that's something we take a lot of pride on because that is what I grew up in. Like I grew up with ha going to a bakery for a fresh pastry, a fresh loaf of bread. The thing number two I was going to tell you was that when I started the bakery, it, once we got settled and we understood how to bake uh, in Colorado and all that, because it took me a little bit, I have to be honest, it took me a little bit of learning, like what's happening here? Why is everything drying out? How do I, you know, work with my formulas and make it work here? Uh, once we settle and we realize, okay, we can do these things, I challenge myself to creating a new pastry every weekend. Oh, wow. So every weekend you come to the bakery and you're going to see, sure, you're going to see the basic assortment, the sourdoughs and the, the, uh, the pastry, but you're always going to see a brand new pastry. And from this challenge of, has become that uh, we've, we've created so many new things. So just recently we created this like croissant cookie thing that's, it just went crazy. It's a literally a, uh, <laughs> it's literally a croissant and a cookie put together. It's got to be pure heaven. Yes. Uh, we now have just a few weeks ago, we created a pizza croissant. The thing of, I'm going to, I have to send you pictures of this. Yes. <laughs> it's think of a pizza. Okay. Same shape, same everything, but the crust is flaky as a croissant. Oh, and the filling is cheap pizza fillings. And, and yeah, so we, we started with a margarita, classic margarita. Okay. Yeah. I have a gremolata with asparagus and lemon zest and, and goat cheese. Uh, we have an onion pizza that's a classic from uh, Argentina. Has so, Fran and John seen this? I don't think so because we started making it. Uh, so we make it to order. So whenever you come in, we'll make it for you. Like like a good pizza shop, you know? Okay. And, I have and, no. And also we only make it from, this is crazy. We only make them from 1 to 3 p.m., two hours a day. That's it. Okay. <laughs> you don't sell them at the farmer's market. No, because, again, I'm so, so picky with the way we present anything that, to me, needs to bake, be baked within the hour. Gotcha. So that means if you come in, we'll bake it for you. Otherwise, we don't, we don't really even bother. Oh, wow. You're, you are amazing, and I know that you were up for a James Beard Award as Best Bakery, and you had no clue it was even going to happen. But, wow, this was not – that you didn't pay off somebody to get there. You were just there, and you deserve it. I give everybody your hours at the source and then how they can order online as well as Farmer's Market. Yeah, so we have we open six days a week, from Tuesday to Sunday. Uh, we open every day at eight a.m. and we close every day, but Sundays at three p.m. On Sundays we close at two, just to give the guys a little, uh, just a little break. Uh, the guys and myself. Yeah, I know. Um, <laughs> we open three hundred and something days a year. We just close the first two weeks of January. The way to order uh, from us, I, I, I do recommend you, you order if you want something specific, like the natas, and you know they're going to run out, or a specific flavor of bread that you want, and you want to guarantee when you come, you, you can pick it up. Uh, you can go to Facebook, you can go to Instagram, and in their profile, there's a link. I could, I could even name the website, but I think it's easier if you just go to our Facebook or our, yeah, or our Instagram page. Bread? It is, it is a little different. So it's reunion bread, that square, that site. So that's why I don't even bother saying oh, it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But it is, it is quite simple to find you. You can even Google reunion bread and it'll take you to our profile and you can click on website. It'll take you straight to the website. And then you can see the thing with the website is that you, you're going to see only the basics. 
which is what most people see on a daily basis, but the specials, because they're only uh, there for the day, you have to come in and see them and, and get them. Got it. Okay. And then you're at Cherry Creek Farmer's Market on Saturday. Yeah, the entire season, it's 27 weeks, weeks which I believe end uh, the last week of October. Right. We are Probably at the market. And you're going to stand in line. Yeah, you got to be ready to stand in line for just a little bit. Yeah, okay. But it's worth it. <laughs> uh, well, I'm, gonna, I'm very biased, but I'm going to say it is worth it. It is worth it. It's, it's just fabulous. And if anybody's like me, once you taste it, Whatever you're going to eat goes on reunion bread. And it is just, you are incredible. So is your product. And for everybody who's watching, please like and subscribe to The Gab. That's G-A-B-B -B on YouTube. The Gab, Gabby Gourmet. On Facebook and Instagram, I am just Gabby Gourmet. And reunion bread, you are the best of any, but there's no commitment. Nobody's as good as Reunion Bread. You are incredible. We try. We're going to try. And I might say I am very excited because he, Ishmael, is venturing out to help us with a charity, even the Food Bank of the Rockies, where there's a desperate need for food. And he graciously accepted making bread. So... Even though we have the top chefs, I'll be very happy eating bread. Anyway, you are a delight. Thank you for taking the time. I know you're crazy busy, but you're crazy wonderful. Thank Gary, you. thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Have a great day. Much you love. too. Bye-bye.